listeners to understand that it's never too late to make a shift, to make a pivot, to make a change in your life. With somebody that was very broken and somebody that was simply surviving, um, I was just living this very default life of what others expected of me. Because the world is a scary place. <laughs> and who wants to send their child out into the world to, to fail? You know, I went to college where I was told to go to college. I had friends that I was told I should have. I dated men that were acceptable on paper. I wasn't living a life of purpose. I was waking up every day and doing the grind. And I was waking up every day and just saying, I guess this is as good as it gets, right? And so it's a moment of asking, what is this all about? Is this as good as it gets? Is this what I'm going to do for the rest of my life? Welcome to Luxury Unplugged. If you're passionate about entrepreneurship, creativity, and maintaining a sane mind, you found your tribe. At Luxury Unplugged, we are dedicated to exploring the world of luxury living, from the most extravagant experiences to the hidden gems that make life truly exceptional. I'm Neeti Keswani, author of best-selling book, Live Your Dreams, and your host for Luxury Unplugged. Every week on Tuesdays, we are bringing you incredible stories of successful entrepreneurs and artists who are crafting a life full of luxury and we are trying to intriguingly captivate the spiritual thought process that fuels their accelerated growth. So get ready to dive deep into the minds of CEOs and creative entrepreneurs who are shaping the world of business and spirituality. So today, our guest is Mary Kay. She is an entrepreneur, mentor, fashionista, business leader, a trailblazer for women. And she's also someone who's chasing change and growth as she discovers and steps into her power. In her former life, she has led a multi-million dollar beauty team. And now she's coaching and mentoring over 15,000 people globally. So welcome, Mary. Uh, thank you so much. It's such a pleasure to be here. Thank you for being here, taking some time out for us and our audiences. All right. So, uh, Mary, your entire experience is so intriguing. Um, you know, as you are a motivational and keynote speaker and a, and a coach to many women around the world. And coming back from the background of somebody who has been in the beauty industry, What's your story like? How did you make the shift? Why did why did this transformation happen really for you? Oh my goodness. Um, I'm gonna try to condense this for your listeners. Um, you know, my my journey to the shift in my own life really started when I was in my 40th year. So, you know, uh what's really interesting is it's never too late. And I really want all of your listeners to understand that it's never too late to make a shift, to make a pivot to make a change in your life. And, um, you know, for me at that time, I was not thinking that I was capable of making a change. You know, the, the person that I was prior to going on this spiritual journey really, um, was somebody that was very broken and somebody that was simply surviving. I, you know, grew up in a home that kind of kept me very safe and lovingly so, but, I never really was exposed to failing or, you know, trying something and seeing what I'm into or knowing what I desire or knowing who I am. And, you know, the messaging was really be seen, not heard. Um, so I really didn't have a voice for, for most of my, you know, childhood and leading into my teenage and young twenties. Um, I was just living this very default life of what others expected of me. And that's, that's the best way I can describe it. And it's not right, wrong, or good or bad. It was just the way that my parents wanted to keep me safe. And to them, that was loving me, right? Because the world is a scary place. <laughs> and who wants to send their child out into the world to, to fail, you know, or in their minds to get hurt or to suffer? Um, and so I just kind of was going through the motions, if you will, 
Um, you know, I, I went to college where I was told to go to college. I had friends that I was told I should have. I dated men that were acceptable on paper. And, um, you know, I, I went into Wall Street, actually, when I graduated college, I went to Wall Street in the middle of Manhattan, because that's where my family all worked. And, you know, nepotism was a real thing back then. And my aunt said, I can get you a job. And I was like, great, I got a job. And it was great. And it was prosperous. And I did well, but I wasn't living a life of purpose. Mm -hmm. I was waking up every day and doing the grind. And I was waking up every day and just saying, I guess this is as good as it gets, right? Mm -hmm. And so I apologize for my dog. Um, and so I really went on like this for many, many years. I, you know, got married, started to have a family. It was one of those things like, this is what I'm supposed to do, right? This is what I'm supposed to do. And I lost my brother on September 11th of 2001. He was in the World Trade Center and he was, he was that day. And it was a devastating moment in my life as anyone who's been through tragedy can understand. And it's, it's a moment of asking, what is this all about? Is this as good as it gets? Is this what I'm going to do for the rest of my life? And I really went on that journey of trying to find myself, but it was also many, many years after that tragic day that I really was even able to embrace thinking about not just the loss of my brother, but thinking about, okay, I felt this like nudge in me, if you can understand that. There was, a, there was an absolute nudge in my soul of, you gotta go find it. There's a purpose for your life. And that, in and of itself became really scary because how, now what, you know? And, and as I just told you, I was, I was kind of brought up to, to just not ask those scary questions and not go down those scary roads. So I spent even more time just not really paying attention to those signs. And I think we all get them. I think we all have moments in our lives where we're feeling that nudge, where we're seeing something or we're hearing something or we, sometimes it's physical. Sometimes we feel physically sick when we're not on our path, when we're not living a life of purpose, which is, in my opinion, what we're all here to do, right? Mm -hmm. We're all here to find them. And um, so it was in my 40th year and I, I started asking these difficult questions of who am I and what do I want? And am I happy? I mean, simple things like, am I happy? And I wasn't. I was not finding joy, even in my three small children at the time. I just was not feeling joy. Um, and I just really listened. I, I, I started to get quiet with myself. I started to meditate. I started to journal, which I hate to do, but I did. Um, and the opportunity of stepping into entrepreneurship, which again was never something that, I mean, I don't even know if I knew how to spell the word, to be honest with you. You know, I was told this is what you do. You know, I wasn't brought up to dream. I wasn't brought up to think that there isn't anything I can't do. But when the idea of starting my own business, becoming an entrepreneur was presented to me, I wanted to say no so bad. Um, I wanted to say, how dare you even think I can do this? a leader, me, I don't, I don't know anyone who would lead me, who would follow me um, when I don't even know myself, right? Um, so, but other people believed in me before I believed in myself. And I, I think that's super important for somebody that is stepping out in courage and saying, there's a passion, there's a dream, there's a desire in my heart, and I'm gonna go try to seek it. The first thing you need to do is find people that believe in you, probably more than you believe in yourself to start. I think uh, I had people one, that believe in me. Yeah, this point that you're mentioning about people believing in you, I would say that you were pretty lucky in that. Um, uh, there was another guest on our podcast that that episode is already aired. You might have a look at it. Uh, so Kevin, uh, he's another podcaster, a very brilliant one. Uh, so he talks about anxiety and depression issues and how he faced a lot of challenges because of the partner that he had and the person was not very encouraging at the time before you know he got into the success mode of his life so yes I do agree with you when you say that yes you have to have that confidence in yourself and 
But what do you do if you don't have anybody around you who's going to support you and your dreams? What do you do then? How do you pull yourself up in that scenario? Um, the journey Listen becomes to... longer. What's that? I'm sorry. Say that again. I'm saying the, jo the journey becomes longer to your dreams. The journey, absolutely. And this is such, I'm so glad you brought this up because I always say to everyone, and if anyone has been on any of my coaching calls, I end it the same way every single time. And it's stay the course, stay the course, because it does take time, you know? And I, and I think this is where people sort of abandon their dreams because it might not be happening in the timeline that they wish or in the timeline that they thought it should have happened. Like it should have happened by now. And, you know, it, it, it's never on our time. And this is where my spiritual journey really came in because it's not on my time. And these things we can't control, you know, what we can control is our mindset. And I think the first thing that I would tell your viewers and your listeners to do if they don't have that support system around them, because I, I get it. I didn't either. You know, I didn't. I, as I told you, you know, my, my family told me this is a horrible idea absolutely horrible idea when I told them about the business I was going to go into. Um, and that's scary because these are people you love and you trust and you respect. And they're telling you that's the most ridiculous idea I've ever heard. Right. And so your age yeah. mark, age factor also comes in because whether we like it or not, it plays a big role in terms of women, in terms of um, hitting that number and, uh, you know, a lot of us yeah. believe that age is just a number, but a lot of people don't believe that. And that's where yeah. these barriers a, come in. A lot of people don't. And I'll add to that, not even as age and number, but I was pretty comfortable. I had food on the table. My kids had clothes on their back. We were living in the suburbs of Connecticut. I mean, from the outside looking in, I was doing really great. But that is not how I felt inside. Right, right. So this I felt empty inside. I felt dead inside. Um, you know, I, and I certainly didn't feel like I was someone in this world, you know, because I didn't feel like I had really anything to contribute. Um, so yes, it takes patience and yes, it takes a lot of grit and hustle. But on top of that, if you don't have somebody in your circle that is supporting you or telling you, yes, let's do this, let's go all in, start with your mindset. Every morning, listen to a podcast that's going to put you in a positive place. Listen to, you know, read a book, um, do those I am affirmations that are everywhere, right? Meditate, get quiet, you know, get into your body because your head... <laughs> is a liar. You know, your head is there to just keep you safe and show you all the scary things that might show up if you go on this journey. Um, but your heart knows and, and anything that is placed on your heart is meant for you. It is absolutely meant for you. And the only one that can keep you from it is yourself because there's not a soul in the world that can take away our dreams and take away our desires except ourselves. And I, I have been a witness to that. <laughs> I, have, I have been there, done that. So I know that to be true. Um, but you might have to wait a really, really, really long time. But isn't your vision worth it? Isn't your dream worth it? Absolutely. Then go for it, right? <laughs> of course. Yeah. So, yeah um, in terms of... Um, the challenges that we have talked about, how did that pivot really happen for you in terms of, yes, you had a good family structure that supported you and yes, you did the mindset thing, but then coming from, um, you also worked in a, in a beauty, uh, in a beauty business as well. Are you still that's, that's, that is what I do. Um, that is my full-time job. I, I started, um, with a network marketing company doing skincare and makeup. And I've been doing that for over 10 years. And I've built an extremely large organization of nearly 15,000 people globally, um, selling an average of $50 million in makeup and skincare a year. Mm -hmm. um, and that is really, that is my, my love. That is my passion because I get to work with women and men. There's actually some men on my team, but um, I get to work with these humans every day that are that are simply looking for more and they're using makeup and skincare as a platform 
but we've really built an incredible community of doers and dreamers and believers. Um, they single-handedly have helped me with my spiritual journey, which ultimately is really where the shift came in my success um, is when I sort of surrendered a lot of control. Um, you know, after losing my brother, I wanted to control everything, as you can imagine, you know, um, everything became heightened for me. Um, and it really is my tribe of, of men and women at my business, at my organization that have really shown me that spiritually, you know, we have so much support out there if we just see it and we surrender to it. Um, and whatever that is for your viewers, for me, it's God. Um, and I really have a very strong faith and a very strong relationship with God. And I, I wake up every single day with just gratitude, gratitude for everything that I have gratitude for the things around me, the life that I've built and, and also gratitude for all that is to come. And that doesn't mean just the good things. That means being grateful through the challenging times too, um, and that's also something that has really sort of shifted everything for me too, is to, to truly look at the challenging times as one of the most exciting moments, because that's when you get to learn. That's when you get to see what's next. What more? How do I peel another layer of this onion? Because when you get through a challenge, it's really when you start to learn who you are and what you're made of. Um, you know, and who you're surrounded with and, and who your happiness team is and all of it. You know, we all do well in good times, but it's really how do we do in the in the not so good times? Um, and that is all the glory to God for me um, because I just can turn to him, you know? True, true. So it's, and I think from there we come on to the question of allowing things to happen. It's not in the how. You mentioned that a couple of times in your blog and your Instagram. So how do you define that? How do you allow things to happen in your life when you're in the midst of some stressful situation or some event where you desperately want results? How do you, yeah. how do you feel that, you know, you can still allow in this situation? Yeah, it's, uh, well, first and foremost, you know, I, I'm a firm believer that there is magic all around us. Mm, there, me too. <laughs> there is there's magic all around us um and and everything you need is within you it is um i don't know if many people believe that i think some people look through a lens of life with this is hard you know and that's a choice that's mm -hmm. a choice um and others look through life as okay what's coming next how am I going to tackle this? How am I going to get through this? So for me, the, you know, the word how is a very disempowering word. I, I don't know how I'm going to do anything. I'm now a single mom to three kids. I don't know how I'm going to continue to support them as their sole financial provider. You know, I've got one in college. I've got another one going to college in two years. I've got another one after that going to college. I don't know how I'm going to do any of these things but I trust, I trust that I will. And that trust allows me to continue to move forward in my life in, in, a, in a faith way. You know, with my own business, I didn't know how I was gonna attract. As I told you at the beginning of this, I, was, I had no idea who I was, no less have 15,000 people want to lead and follow with me. Um, I have no idea where I'm going to find another customer who would love access to my amazing products. I have no idea how I'm going to, you know, do really anything. There's so many things that we don't have control over. So that word is just very disempowering for me because if I sit in that, if I sit in, how am I going to put three kids through college by myself? How am I, it, it, it it's, it's exhausting. It um, it's exhausting. It's energetically low vibrating. <laughs> um, it's, it's not where any magic lives. I can promise you that. True. Um, the magic does so the really moment, live. The moment you get into the house of the situation, the idea is to pivot towards allowing it and, uh, bringing on the faith full on whatever faith yes. you have, whatever faith you have and lead with gratitude. 
I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. I'm grateful for this challenge right now. I'm grateful for not knowing how, but I, but I trust that this is meant for me. And I don't know what I'm going to have to go through to get to it, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Um, and I'm just going to allow what's going to show up to show up. And I promise you, I promise you, it doesn't mean there's not going to be tough times. It doesn't mean you're not going to have challenges. It doesn't mean you're not going to have nights and days where you take to the bed with a box of tissues because greatness is sometimes a snotty box of tissues. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's part of the journey. That's part of the process. Um, but it's also worth it. It all is what makes what I call a remarkable life. You know, nobody has a remarkable life who hasn't been through some stuff, right? Absolutely. You know, um, you tend to value stuff more once you've been through some things in life. Absolutely. And there's no better story than when you bet on yourself. Um, and, and you really go all in. And, and like I said, just get with those people that are going to say, yes, you can do this. And I don't know what this is going to look like. I'll bring the tissues, but, but let's go, you know, let's go. True. True. So you are also uh, talking about, uh, you know, shedding the layers of negativity and getting the belief in and not giving in to the pressures and the worries and the stresses, which we have covered a bit. But when you are talking to women, are you coaching women only or are you talking to men as well? Both. Both. Okay. Yeah. So, so, men, but mostly women, but there are definitely some men. Yeah. So is, is it like, you know, what sort of challenges do you face in, in those kind of calls or those kind of one-to-one -one sessions or what sort of sessions you're having? I mean, what sort of challenges people are coming with? Are they not the best version of themselves? Are they wanting to become that? How do you yeah. uh, approach that, those kind of challenges? Well, I think everyone wants to be the best version of themselves, right? I mean, that's, that's the goal, right? Mm -hmm. Is to really show up in life as that highest, greatest version of yourself. I think the biggest challenge I have um, in my own coaching is really helping them see the pure gold that's that's within them. You know, they all think they need more skills or 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 more training or more product knowledge or you know or more self help books. Um, and all of that is great. I just think that people they they wait too long to actually just get into action. So for me, that's probably my most difficult, you know, struggle and challenge with, coach, with coaching. But what I've learned through, through the years is, you know, people have a very different perspective on life and how life occurs for someone else is very different than how life occurs for me. So what they worry about, what they're fearful of, you know, what their everyday life is like is, is very different. And, and that really shifted my my coaching practice was to just understand that life occurs differently for people. So now that's the basis of my calls, not how many lip glosses are you going to sell or how many people are you going to offer this opportunity to? It's really about, you know, how is life occurring for you today? Because what might be easy to me, like, oh, just go out there and sell a lip gloss, do what I do, you know, is is also very disempowering because you know, some people come into a, a coaching session and they're looking at my chapter 20 and they're at chapter one. And it's really about putting myself back in chapter one, right? Back, mm -hmm. back to, to their shoes, to when I was a new budding representative of my company and, and trying to learn the, the way of the road, you know? Um, and really understanding that when you can, when you can grasp onto how life is occurring for the other person, and put yourself in their shoes, the game is completely changed. It, it really does become, first of all, it builds trust, right? It, it builds a very significant trust. And I think that that's something that I've absolutely mastered um, mm -hmm. is creating that trust between me and my team. Um, they know I'm the person to come to when they've got something they have to work through. Um, I'm the visionary. And when they need to get like sort of re, you know, ignited into that vision, even for themselves, I am definitely the on speed dial. Um, because I really believe in that. I believe, you know, if we don't know where we're going, 
what it, what is there, you know? So having that vision of what does your life look like when you do get what you want, when you do realize that dream, how does that feel? What are you wearing? You know, where are you? Who mm-hmm. are you surrounding yourself with? How, you know, how are you giving back? How are you doing all the things that you hope you can do in the world and really living in that as if it's already here, as if it's already happened. So for me, I kind of, that's, that's my mindset. When I show up to my desk every day, I show up as if we already are the most significant brand in the world. We already are, you know, a billion dollar beauty brand. We already are hundreds of thousands of consultants strong. Um, and I believe that's an energy mm-hmm. that just, brings. and if you want to know the secret sauce, it's really that because someone who's on a mission, people cannot ignore. You can't, it, it's, it's, it's a, it's a universal law. You can't ignore somebody who is a high vibrating individual who's on a mission and is up to big things. And you don't even know what it is. I mean, some people you walk in a room and you know, your head turns when somebody walks in a room, it's not because of the outfit they're wearing. Most likely it's, it's because of the energy that's coming out of that person because Mm -hmm. they're standing in they're they're grounded and they're standing in their mission Mm -hmm. and they're showing up every day as if it's already here. And people are going to want to attach a string to that kite because they, they feel it, they see it and they feel it. And I, I think that's really important for people to understand. And that is something that you can control. And that is something that you can make a choice every day to say, I know what I'm up to. I know the game I'm playing and I'm going to show up as that person, you know, show up as that person with millions of dollars in the bank. If that's your dream, show up as that person with thousands of people following you and, and, and loving what you're doing or buying your book or, you know, engaging in your services, whatever it is, show up as that person, go into that Starbucks, like that person and watch, watch heads turn, watch people be like, who is she? And I don't even know who's that girl, but she's up to something. And I want it. I want more of that. You know, my experience that most of the world is walking around you know, joyless and, and joy and happiness is two different things for me. Like happiness is something that we can feel any given day, but it's fleeting. Joy is something that we really embody in our hearts. And I think there's a lot of people that are really lacking joy. And when they see somebody who's full of it, they want it. They want it. And that to me is, is honestly, um, 99.9% of realizing your dreams. It is so I, I, beautiful what all, what all you just said in this last uh, few minutes because um, I'm resonating completely with whatever you've said, not only because I believe completely in these ideas and it's a part of my life as well, but also because um, my book, uh, it's, it's called Live Your Dreams and the tagline is Be You. So yeah. it, it's, it's a fictional story of a young woman who's on a mission to break free from the conventions and, you know, live life on her own terms. So she's, so the story goes that she, she's working in a, you know, in an HR uh, segment of the, of a big corporate um, and uh, how her life pivots completely from that high flying job into somebody um, as a fashion illustrator. And I don't have any clue, by the way, about, about how fashion designing happens. But when I'm when I was writing that book, everything just flew to me, you know, everything just came into me, how to think like a fashion illustrator and how she would go about and getting that dream job. It all just came to me at that time. So it was beautiful. It, it all entailed about what all you talked about, the nuggets, the, the nudge inside, the feeling, you know, that somebody is there watching you, trusting that. It's just beautiful. And it's it's true. You know, it is something which we feel it on a spiritual level. But mm-hmm. we need to have that calm inside yeah. to feel that, yeah. all of that. Yeah. yeah. And it it's every single human being has access to that. You know, we really, really do. Um, and whatever that might look like for you, it might not, you know, be the same, but you do have access to something that is more powerful than you. And whatever you make that to be is fine. But don't think that you have all the answers. Don't think you know how to do anything. You know, yes, we can learn, (laughs) you know, yes, we can, you know, go on the journey and learn. But what we what we're looking for, you know, 
how how did I meet you? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's exactly. simple things like this. And this is why you have to trust that when you put yourself out there, the people that are meant to find you will. And that is a power that is bigger than you. It's beautiful. But you must believe in it. You must trust it. And you must have faith in it. And, and you know, faith is blind. I get it. But it's such a beautiful, you know, um, peaceful thing to live knowing that I have the faith that what I need will absolutely find me. Not in my timing. Most definitely not in my timing. And most definitely, maybe sometimes not in the way that I envision it. Maybe it's even more beautiful, you know? And, and I also realize that sometimes when things don't work out, it's because there's something better that is meant for me. Hmm. And trusting yeah. that, you know, it just, it's, it's such a peaceful way to live. And I just encourage everybody to just really go on that, that journey. And it's not that you, it's all hunky-dory stuff. It's not something that hokey-pokey stuff. It's something that you start, that's your starting point. Yes. And then you move on from there. You do the grind, whatever you're supposed to do in the day, whatever yeah, you're supposed you have to do. To <laughs> yeah. You have to show up. Nobody's going to come banging down. <laughs> you have to show up for your life, um, you know, personally and professionally. You, you got to put yourself out there. I mean, I'm a single woman now out there in the dating world. That's a whole nother conversation. But, you know, you got to put yourself out there um, and you really have to go all in, you know, and get vulnerable and share. And, you know, people's stories are so powerful. And, you know, to me, that's another challenge that I have sometimes with people coaching wise, because they'll say, well, I don't really have a story. There's so many people in the world that don't think they have a story. <laughs> you know? And it's so like, funny. Oh my God. You absolutely have a story. Every single one of you have a story and your story is powerful and your story impacts lives and your story makes people not feel alone. And that's the greatest gift that we can give somebody is to know that, okay, my life seems to be in chaos, but I'm not alone. Someone else was there and she got out of it, right? And so when we share our story, we give people hope and the world, the world needs hope. They need hope right now. And so you also have a movement of sisterhood. Uh, is that your community or what is it? What exactly is yeah. it? That is my community. Um, you know, we are family. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no other way to say that. My team is my family. And when we set out to, to start the brand that I work with, and I, I was the very first person to join the company. So I'm what's called a corporate led leader to my company. So I have about 985% of the company underneath my leadership. Um, and when we set out to, to start the brand, it was very conscious and intentional that culture and community was going to be the basis of it. That servant leadership was going to be the basis of it. And collaboration over competition is, is what we strive for every single day. You know, we really collaborate and, you know, that became so evident to me in the beginning of my journey, because where I was weak, others were strong. And when we came together is where the magic started to show up, right? None of us can do anything alone. Nobody wants to be on an island. And so we really do love each other deeply and care about each other. And, and also, as I explained earlier, you know, this whole idea of like, how is life occurring for you? I mean, I've really gotten to know my teammates, you know, it's, it's not about dollars and cents. It's, it's not about titles. It's not about paychecks. It's about human connection. And we really made it that way from day one and pushing up people is all I care about. <laughs> um, that's, that's my intention every single day. How do I push up people? How do I make somebody way down in my organization realize that they are a very important piece of my puzzle? I cannot be in my greatness without all of them in their greatness. And I really take that very, very seriously. Um, and it's, it's something that I just show up with every single day is just, again, that gratitude, you know, these people are here voluntarily mm -hmm. um, and they work with me voluntarily, but I know we are impacting each other's lives. We go on vacations together. Um, we get our families together. I mean, it really is a sisterhood um, that in my humble opinion comes around once in a lifetime. 
I, I, I am, and again, this speaks to just, it's not in the how, it's in the allow. I had no idea how these amazing human beings from all over the world were going to find me and say, I want to do what she's doing. I want to be a part of that. I had no idea how that was going to happen. But every time I meet another member of my team, it's like I'm looking in the mirror. It's like, yep. And at this point, I, it's not even a coincidence. I'm like, yep, there's another person that's going to change my life for the better that is exactly like me, that we're going to like make magic together. And if you have the faith and you show up like that, you really will attract because like attracts like. I mean, it's that simple. So how are you being? Be who you want to be out there in the world. Be the change you want to see and watch everything just attract to you like a magnet. Beautiful, beautiful. Lovely talking to you, Mary. So much enjoyed each part of the conversation. Thank you so much. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. And I have so much gratitude for you. Um, <laughs> I'm so glad to have met you and that you've come into my world. And um, once again, no coincidence, but thank you for, for this amazing way to start my day. This is a beautiful conversation right for you in the morning, but for me also to end the day is beautiful. <laughs> God, love and God bless you all. God bless your viewers and your listeners and um, just stay the course. Stay the course and you are loved and you are enough and you have everything you need. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much. God bless. And now, <laughs> if you found this conversation inspiring and helpful, please consider liking this video, subscribing to our channel for more empowering content and hitting the notification bell so you never miss another interesting video. We look forward to continuing this journey of self-discovery. Cheers.